Hello, my name's Louise Barlow. I'm one of the nurses here on the ward. Hi, Louise. Hi. Is it all right if I take a seat and just ask you a That'd few be questions? Lovely. Is that okay? Right. What brings you here today? Tell me a little bit more about what brings you here. Well, I've been seeing the surgeon here at the hospital for a while now um, because of my hip. Right. I've had problems with my hip. And uh, I think he's decided it's time now, even though I was a bit reluctant at mm -hmm. first, um, to have the hip operation. Things have been getting progressively worse yeah. and it's time now, okay. Is it all right if I just ask you a few questions um, about how you've been getting on and just get a few details from you? Yeah, that'd be lovely. Lovely, okay. So it's uh, Susan Brown, isn't it? it? Is. is that right? Okay. And do you like to be called Susan or? Um, no, Sue. Just okay. call me Sue, Louise. Lovely. And you're happy for everyone to call you Sue? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Brilliant. You're looking a bit uncomfortable there. Do you want yeah, me to just I am a pillow? little bit. Do you want a pillow? Just that would be lovely. That. Thank you. There we go. Let's just pop that. Thank you very much. Where's that? Is that comfortable lovely. for you? Can I just confirm your date of birth? It's the 4th of December, 1965. Lovely. So that makes you... 49. 49. Very Nearly lovely. 50. Big birthday next year. Yeah, lovely. Can you just tell me your address, Sue? It's 174 yeah. Privet Drive. Wolverhampton. And do you have the postcode? I do, it's WV12. Yes. 3RT. Lovely. And did it, do you have a home telephone number there? Yeah, at home it's 01902. Yes. 425. Yeah. 425. Brilliant, okay. And um, other than your home phone, do you have any other means of contact? Do you have a mobile? Yes, yes, I have a mobile in my bag. Okay, and do you have the number with you? Oh, 0773 yep. 42 4235. That's lovely. 
And um, in terms of home, is it a house that you live in, so or a bungalow? Or a yeah, flat, it's a or... proper house there, unfortunately. Okay, all right. So have you been finding that a bit difficult? Yes. Yeah. yeah, very much so. It's an old house, so the stairs are quite steep. Right. Uh, okay. Which makes it even worse, I think. And does anyone else live in the house with you? Just my husband now. Okay. Um, I have a son, but he's just left to go to university. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So it's been busy times. Oh, no. Yeah, Backward yeah. and forward to get him moved in at university. Absolutely. Do you have any pets or any other Just a cat. Okay. But he, he's cat. quite independent. Okay. I'll just get you next of King Daytel. So would that be your husband? Yes, it yeah. will be. And what's your husband's name? Robert. Robert. And is he got Robert Brown, is he? Yes. Yeah. And he lives at the same he address as you? He does indeed. Does he have a contact number other he, than your home number? He does. 0793 yeah. 442 yeah. 34547. Yes. Is Robert aware of the reason for your admission and the fact that yeah, you're Yes, he's actually operation? just outside, I think, parking the car. Okay, all right. So he's, he's yeah, aware of everything is, that's been yes. going on. That's lovely. In terms of your general practitioner, um, Sue, do you know your GP's name? Yes, it's Dr Singh at okay. the Meadows Healthcare Centre. And other than your GP and Mr Martin, have you seen anybody else in relation to the, um, the problem with your hip? Yeah, Mr Martin referred me to the physiotherapist. Okay, lovely. Um, and they've started treatment. I've seen them for the last five weeks. Excellent. Um, in preparation, I think. Yes, and um, is it the physiotherapy based here at the hospital? It is, okay. yeah. Okay, so they're going to be yeah. continuing on your care post They will post be, operatively. yes. That's lovely. Brilliant. Other than that, have you had any other home care teams, anybody coming out to help no. you in the house? Okay. Okay, so Sue, so in terms of um, your general health, um, any other sort of illnesses, anything, any operations that you had previously, um, or things you have to see the GP regularly for? Um, I have blood pressure problems. Right, okay. Um, so um, I do take medication for that. Okay. Um, I did take... Um, Ramapril, I think first, but that didn't suit me at all. Okay. I got cough and felt unwell. Right. On okay. So you had a, had an allergic response yes. to the Ramapril. Okay. Yeah. So now I take Imi something. Is that in Dapamide? That's is, the one. Is it good? Okay. And something else, but I've brought all my tablets with me. Right, okay, lovely. That. We'll have a close look at those in a, in a little while, okay? Is your blood pressure being well controlled? Yeah, it has. Yeah, okay. it has. I haven't had any more problems with that. Okay. I've only ever really been in hospital um, before for anything. Um, when I was a child, I had my appendix right. out. Okay. But I've had That's nothing okay. surgery-wise at all. Okay, so other than the blood pressure and the appendix, nothing else in terms of your medical history. No. And um, in terms of your medication, you're on the two blood pressure medications yeah. and we'll check those out in a little bit. Are you on any pain medication at all for the hip? Um, yes, I have Coproximal and Naproxen okay. um, currently. Um, and they upset my tummy a little bit right, so okay. I take a meprazole as well all right and how's the tummy been since you've been on the okay great it's fine. yeah and do you take the coproxamol and the naproxen regularly do you take yes it I do have to the doctor, yeah. they did try me originally with the patches okay um um with the is it the morphine patches yes um yeah. but they made me feel really quite unwell okay um unsteady right. um so we just keep with the Coproximal and then the proxin now. Okay, and is the pain controlled with that? It takes the edge off, but I right. still get quite uncomfortable. Okay. Um, and sometimes I have to take night off right, to okay. sleep because once I get into bed, 
and you get stuck in a position it, it gets quite uncomfortable okay so you buy night all over the counter yeah I do do you buy anything else over the counter any other tablets that you take regularly not regularly um, but I do have Benadryl um, okay. for allergies as yes. and when okay and is that just sort of hay fever allergies yeah. or yeah. yeah okay so other than that do you um, sort of purchase any herbal remedies or anything like that any supplements no. vitamins no so in terms of your allergies, um, you say that you're allergic to um, the Ramipril that made you cough. Did it? So they stopped it that. Did. Okay. Any other allergies that you know of? No. No. Okay. Right. Okay. So obviously you're here today for your operation. What are your feelings around sort of coming in for an operation of this nature? A little bit nervous. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've never had a big operation like this really. Okay. Um, so a little bit concerned. I'm not uh, used to being in a hospital. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can understand why you feel like that. We're here to answer any questions, concerns, anything you need. You just ask the team, okay? Either Great. the nursing team or the medical team, okay? Um, and we can support you and your family through the admission. Thank okay. you. All right. On the positive side, hopefully things will be a lot better when you've had your operation. So it could be nice to see you. I'm hoping so. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I can understand how you how you feel. All right. Thank you very much. Is it okay now if we just go on and have a little chat about um, some of your um, daily activities, okay? I just need to know how really the hip has been affecting you on a day-to-day -day basis and talk about things that we need to support you um, from, a, from a nursing perspective while you're in hospital. Yeah, no problem. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. First of all, at the moment, you're able to sort of um, get up and mobilise and so forth, aren't you, to a degree? Yes. Um, how far would you be able to walk? I can potter about the house, okay. um, although it's uncomfortable. Right. Um, that's not a problem. When it comes to going up the stairs, yeah, that becomes a huge issue. Um, I can probably um, I can probably potter about for 10, 15 minutes before I really have to mm -hmm. take the weight off it and, and have a little rest. Okay. Now. Yeah. Uh, you're able to transfer from a chair safely. Yes, yeah, no yeah, problem. So you've not had any problems with any no. falls or anything in no. the home. Okay, that's lovely.
Obviously, after the operation, there, there'll be a period of time when you will be needing to be um, sort of within the bed, okay? Normally, we get you up after uh, sort of the next day after having a hip operation, but after the procedure, you, you'll be in bed. Um, obviously, you won't be as uh, you won't be able to mobilise like you have been, okay? Um, We'll be here, all right, you'll have a buzzer, you'll be able to contact us and, you know, we'll, we'll come to you if you need any assistance, so please don't feel worried or, or sort of isolated after the operation, okay? okay? The physiotherapist said they'd get me up with the next that's Absolutely. quite quick, isn't it? Absolutely, it is, it is. That's but quite soon. Yeah, we make sure that your pain medication is very well controlled, so that your pain is at a, you know, at a good level, um, and obviously they're very experienced, um, and it's important that we get you out of bed, because yeah. that we can run into complications if you're lying in bed for a long time so um, don't worry I know people feel anxious and I've had people express concerns before but it's it's been been it's a regular procedure and we, we do it and, and, and you'll be fine okay we'll support you through. Okay. all right Just a few questions about your general health. Do you have any problems with your breathing at all? Any problems that have you been a smoker in the past? No, the never been alone? a smoker. No, my husband doesn't smoke. Okay. Um, only the coughing when I was on the Ramapril. Okay, but other than that, nothing. No. You, you've not had asthma in the past or anything. No, like not that. at all. Lovely. Okay. And and what about at night? Um, do you snore when you're asleep? Or no, or, I don't um, snore. Um, but uh, I do because I have the acid reflux. Right. Yeah. Um, so um, sometimes if I'm laying too low, okay, um, it'll wake me up and I'll cough. So do you have to sleep with a number of pillows? Four, yeah. Oh, four I pillows. have the whole four pillows. Okay. I'm quite upright when I sleep. All right. Well, we've got three here today. We'll yeah. sort that out for you so that you're comfortable and things aren't as worse whilst you're in here. But please let us know if you need anything extra. Thank okay. you. Okay. Your main language is English, you're speaking to me it in is. English today, yes. and you've got not any problems with your hearing or anything no. like that that you've got any concerns about, no, no. you don't need any sort of um, support or anything no, not while at you're all. in hospital, lovely. And in terms of pain, what we normally try and do when people are in hospital is, is use what we call a pain scale, okay? So right. I can tell when you're walking in, you know, you, I can tell oh. by your expression that, you know, you, you, you are in, in a degree of pain, particularly when you're walking. But what we like you to do is try and verbalise that and let us know so that we can help with your pain medication, all right? Okay. So after we've done the assessment, I'll spend a little bit of time talking about pain scales and things like that. And it's something that we can use after your operation as well so Lovely. you can tell us you know where along the uh, a scale of 0 to 10 your pain is 0 being you're fine no pain 10 being the worst pain you've ever had but Lovely. we'll spend some time doing that uh, okay a bit later Lovely. okay In terms of your mobilising, um, and you've been limited to sort of walking short distances, have you been using any aids at home? Have you had a walking stick? I or? have actually got a walking stick, okay. and, but I only use it if I'm out of the house and okay. I, I'm going to be walking quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so just before I stopped work, um, I had the walking stick for work because the long corridors could yeah. be quite challenging Absolutely. at the school. Yeah, okay. So, again, um, after the operation, the physios um, will, will do an assessment. So, it may mean that you need two sticks to start off with yeah. and then things can decrease. But we will monitor your mobility after the operation. You will have your nurse call buzzer. Um, you won't be able to get up out the chair on your own for the first day or two. So we just need you to be aware of these things post-operatively. Um, have you got any concerns about that at this stage? Or No, I don't no. think so. Okay, we're here to help, so just, just don't worry about that, okay? Lovely. Any problems at home sort of doing your shopping, um, getting your food? Um, no, prepared? I've got I've got plenty of help. Okay. Um, my mother in law lives locally, Lovely. so I've got okay. plenty of help, so I don't think that's a problem. So you've got a nice support mechanism, yeah. okay, that's lovely. Have you had any problems with sort of um, digestion, any problems with swallowing or so forth? You said you've got an irritated tummy. Yeah, um, which is why I take the omeprazole. Okay. Um, but as long as I keep off spicy foods, okay, all right. yeah, no curries or anything like that. 
that that's okay, too, too spicy. spicy. Right. And so you know the type of food yes. that obviously. Yeah. Obviously in hospital we have a, a, a wide range of men on the menu that you'll be able to choose your options from. Have you got any sort of preferences or any dislikes for foods that we, we need to tell about? Any cultural things that, that we, we need to be aware of? No, I don't think so. As long as it's quite plain. Okay, that's um, fine. Yeah, it's yeah. just spicy, I think that's my biggest issue. Okay. And cheese. Cheese is an you issue. Avoid. Okay, that's fine. There should be plenty of options for you. Just asking you a few more sort of personal type questions. Any problems with sort of going to the toilet at all? Um, I have been a little bit constipated. I think it's those painkillers. Right. It's okay. since I've started taking all the painkillers. Yeah. It um, sometimes can be the codeine in the coproximal that causes yeah. the problem. Have you been doing anything at home to help with the constipation? Um, just um, all bran and some prunes Fantastic. every day. Lovely. <laughs> and has that kept you going yet? Yeah, day? it's helped. It's helped. I know when I don't have the prunes that it it goes backwards a little bit so okay. so we need to make sure that we keep an eye on on your sort of um, bowel habits while you're in yeah. hospital here all right um, we do tend to put you on some um, laxatives some some medicines that help you to, to open your bowels is that okay. like the prunes it is but it's yeah. a little bit more formal so we'll yeah. give it you regularly oh, we don't definitely. want you straining after the operation okay yeah. so it's important that we do that so please let us know if you're feeling uncomfortable or anything like that okay I will do and what about passing you any problems passing you in no. school? No, no, no issues, no blood in your urine, burning, no, stinging, not at all. Lovely. And what about actually using the toilet? Have you been okay at home or have you yeah. had difficulties? It's, I, luckily, the sink's next to the toilet so right. I can lower myself down. Okay. Because um, Getting down and getting up can be a little bit of an issue yeah, absolutely. Um, with the hip, but apart from that, no. Okay, lovely. All right. What we will do here and what we do have in the toilet is some raised seats, okay? So it helps you getting from a sort of sitting oh, room um, to a standing position. And there's also handrails within the toilet Fantastic. facilities. So it will help you with that. And all the toilets have got nurse call facilities. I know sometimes it can be a little bit embarrassing for patients yeah. who don't have to normally um, ask for our help, but we're here to help you if there's any concerns when you're in that uh, that situation okay lovely thank right. you um in terms of after the operation um normally we pop a catheter in um have you heard about catheters before yes yeah. i have okay so mm, i'm not looking forward to that no, absolutely we tend to put them in after the operation because obviously you can't mobilize as well but we do try and get them removed as quickly as possible after the after the procedure as possible uh, you know as good we can. so it normally is the next day as we're getting you out of bed and then you know we can at least ensure that you can transfer to the commode or to the toilet that's so great what we will have to be doing is sort of checking how much urine so don't worry if we're checking your catheter um, frequently right. um, it's just so we can keep an eye on things all right but you do need to let us know how much you're drinking yeah um, and we will be encouraging you to drink as much after the operation all right In terms of um, other hygiene uh, problems at home, any problems with sort of sharing bathing? Yeah, um, I haven't. Well, I haven't been able to get in and out of the bath. Right. Okay. Um, Has so, that been a problem for you? Well, home? we do have a shower, right. a downstairs shower and toilet room, so um, that's been fantastic. Good. Good. Um, but standing for a long time in one position is also an issue. Yeah. So I actually bought a plastic stool, a high plastic stool that I can right. just sort of perch on fantastic. while I'm in the shower. Okay. And so, that's safe and safe. Yeah, with yeah, yeah. Lovely. Okay. Um, so obviously while you're here, um, we've got the uh, facilities, um, sort of the, the single sex facilities off the ward, okay, so that you'll be able to go away and, and have your shower with the facility to, to, to have help if you need it. Okay. Lovely. After the operation, we tend to just give you a, a sort of a bath in bed, if that's okay. How do you feel about mm, having... I'm not looking forward to that. I'll do as much as I can myself. Absolutely, and we <laughs> really encourage that. We really do, because obviously, yeah. you know, it's not a normal activity for yourself. So there, there's certain things that you'll be able to yeah. do. But it's important for you to let us know if you feel uncomfortable or you need a wash at any particular time, because everyone's different. Um, but please let us know. I All will right? do. And we'll facilitate it if we can. All right. Thank you. Now, before you go home, we will get the occupational 
therapist to come out and do an assessment of your home, okay? So they will go and look at aids which will help you. Um, I know the physios have probably already talked to you about the fact that you won't be able to do lots of bending or lots of sort of standing, sitting and so forth and you'll need your chairs at specific heights. So yes. we'll get all that sorted out for you before you go, go home, all right? That's great. That's lovely. Okay, so um, just moving on, on a little bit. Um, any problems before you came into hospital with sort of temperatures, fevers, anything like that? You've not had a cold recently? No, or... not at all. Okay, I've been lovely. quite well apart from this here. Fantastic, mm. lovely. And um, in terms of how you, you like to be, do you like to be warm or do you like to be cool? I like to be nice and warm. I like to be nice and warm, yes. okay. So um, we've got one sheet on the, and one blanket on the bed, but if you do need extra, please let us know, okay, so that we can keep you nice and warm after lovely. the operation, okay. Um, and obviously, you're not going to be able to do that yourself for the first few hours after the operation so again press the button and let us know So obviously from what I've understood so far, you know, it has had quite an impact on your on your sort of activities at home and at work, yeah. Um, do you want to tell me a little bit more about how it's affected you? Well before um, I started having problems with the hip I was a I was a keen runner. Right. I used to run, okay. I did road running with my husband. Um, and I was doing half marathons at one point. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the last year and a half, really, I've done virtually nothing. Okay. Uh, put on a lot of weight, put on about two and a half stone. Right, okay. Um, which is uh, a bit depressing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and obviously very busy with work. Exactly. Um, and a teenage son, driving backwards and forwards, ferrying about. So, I had a very active lifestyle before all this started absolutely so hopefully things will improve post you know after after the operation which is really encouraging for yeah. you i can see you're really motivated to get back to absolutely where you were absolutely that. and yeah. mr martin even said that i might be able to start running again oh fantastic so, so that'd be really yeah. good for you because yeah. it's obviously something that you enjoy doing it is yeah. it is very yeah. much so We've discussed a lot, haven't we? So you've been an active lady up until now and very busy with your home life and your, your full-time work as a teacher. Yeah. Um, so you, you said how sort of um, that's made you feel um, a little bit down and so forth recently. It has, it has, yeah. I've put on a lot of weight and yeah. uh, it is a little bit uh, depressing. Okay. Um, yeah. And how has that made you feel generally about yourself? Um, a bit down and uh, not very attractive. Yeah. Um, you know, um, it's not nice. No. And um, when you can't keep as fit and active as you were and yeah. you look different. Yeah. Um, so it is. Uh, and how's that been in terms of your relationship with your husband? Has that caused? Um, well, what with feeling unattractive mm -hmm. and putting on so much weight and the hip mm -hmm. and the pain. Um, and the weight doesn't help the pain yeah, as absolutely. well. So we haven't really been intimate yeah. um, for a while. So uh, I'm hoping that once it's all fixed, you know, we can get back on get track back and into, yeah. I can get back to my normal self. And you're not on your own. A lot of people experience these types of, of problems when they've got, you know, issues such as the, the, yeah. the hip and the pain. Um, and things do improve and, the, and we can support you um, after the operation. Your general practice team can support you if you've got any concerns after Thank that. Thank you. All right. Just moving on to um, your sleeping, you said that the pain disturbs you during the night. It and, does, uh, yes. And you take the night owl over the counter, is that yes, right? Yeah, okay. just get it from the local chemist. Okay, all right. So. Um, it's it's obviously not something that we routinely prescribe at hospital. It is sort of an over-the-counter um, medication, yeah. and we don't encourage patients to take over-the-counter medication whilst they're in hospital. Okay. Um, we'd like to be aware of everything that you're taking, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, what we will say is that we will try and get your pain sort of maintained um, at a good level and try and optimise your pain management so that things you know, are a little bit more comfortable. That'd be but nice. again, yeah, absolutely. Again, you need to let us know and we'll be asking you as I've said about uh, about your levels of pain at night. Lovely. 
we try and keep things as quiet as we can at night. Um, uh, what time do you normally uh, sort of go to bed? Um, well, it's been later because right. once I'm in bed, I can't move as easily yeah. um, and it's been uncomfortable. So I tend to leave it till about 11 p.m. Okay, so that, um, that coincides well and when we're settling down, really, we usually do the drug round later about 10 o'clock in the evening and then things start yeah. settling. So, but please let us, you know, let us know if there's any concerns or worries throughout the night. And then just finally, um, any sort of major concerns, worries, anything that Mr Martin has told you, um, you know, that has concerned you about your admission? Well, we were talking um, last time I was in um, to see Mr Martin, he was telling me about all the risks. Mm -hmm. and I suppose that I've been dwelling on the um, the anaesthetic risks he was talking about. Yeah. And it's like, oh, what if I don't wake up? Absolutely. And, and, and I know it's silly, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, that is playing on my mind a little bit. Yeah, and it's a very natural reaction. It's a reaction that a lot of people have when they come for, for surgery of this nature. What we do have to do um, as uh, healthcare professionals is, is tell you the whole, you know, every single outcome of, 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 of the procedure in, uh, so that you can make an informed decision, a decision on, on whether you want to go ahead, ahead with the operation, okay? Yes. So Mr Martin has told you best case and worst case scenarios, okay? What I can say is that Mr Martin is a very experienced surgeon and we do a, number, a lot of these procedures in the hospital, so I reassure you that, you know, we're very, very skilled at, at handling this procedure all right that's so, reassuring okay <laughs> thank you all right. Um, is there anything else that you would like to tell me while we've got this opportunity to discuss issues uh, I don't think so um, oh you know, there is something I've forgotten to tell you. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm allergic to penicillin. Oh, right. It was okay. when I was a child, many years ago, and yeah. um, I think um, it's always been on my notes since. Okay, and um, did you have a rash when you I were a child? I did, yes, okay. yes. So yeah. your GP And I've never had penicillin since, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's absolutely fine. I'll make sure that our notes and the medical notes are updated. I'll let the medical Testing. team know. Okay. okay. And... Um, is there anything that we've discussed today that has concerned you at all? No, not at all. I think it's been really clear. Thank oh, you, good. Louise. That's lovely. Well, we're here to ask any questions at any time. Please feel free, OK, to ask questions and your husband if he needs to as well. If I can't find the answer, then I'll find a member of the team who can. All right. So please feel free and relax. All right. Thank you. Lovely. I'm going to go off now. I'm just going to get um, your wristband and we can get you sort of uh, pop your wristband on, get your name on the board, and then you can just spend a little bit of time with your husband and get settled into the bed space. All Thank all you right. very much. Thank you very much for answering the questions today. It's lovely to meet you. And you. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Sue, I'm just back to pop your wristbands on, if that's okay. Okay. Lovely. Now, we give you a, 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 a wristband because of your allergy, okay? So I've, I've popped that you're um, allergic to penicillin on here. So we'll pop the red one on first, if that's okay. Shall I pop it on your left? Are you left or right-handed? I'm right-handed. Lovely. I'll pop it on your left arm so it's out of the way. 